On this week's Carrier Wrap, we speak with Bill Ho from 556 Ventures for a deep dive into wireless carrier color results with a big focus on T-Mobile US and spend a few minutes talking about Scotch. Well, thanks for joining us on this week's Carrier App. Uh, I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief here at RCR Wireless News. And this week, we are joined by Bill Hose with uh, 556 Ventures to talk a bit about uh, some carrier information, some carrier results. So, hey, uh, Bill, thanks for joining us this week. Again, we uh, appreciate it. Hey, always happy to be here. Very good. Well, again, we like, your, uh, you like the background this time. It looks very really good. Good branding there for 556. But, uh, again, we'll talk about some, uh, some carrier results. And also, maybe later on in the show, we'll talk a bit about uh, some scotch, which we've had a nice... Nice run of some uh, some Scotch talk on the show, so we'll uh, we'll touch on Scotch. Just a, a little uh, teaser there. I've got a Glenn Livet, uh, sixteen year. I'll be discussing uh, for this show, and I believe you've got uh, a McCallum. I have a uh, McCallum, ten year old. Very good. So stay tuned for that. But uh, well, first we'll start off with uh, we have just come out of basically most of the results now have been posted for the uh, the domestic carriers. I think um, all the big four have reported already, and uh, even some of the regional guys. But uh, I, I guess I want to touch basically a little bit on. Uh, I guess I focus on the T-Mobile results. T-Mobile uh, reported the last of the big four, uh, posted some, uh, still some strong numbers, maybe not quite as dominating as maybe it has in the past, but still uh, leading the industry in terms of the all-important uh, postpaid smartphone uh, customer growth. Again, showing some good numbers there. Seems to be still taking customers from rivals as well. Uh, I guess looking at the numbers, uh, anything for you that kind of stuck out or what was your general view of how T-Mobile did during the, uh, during the quarter? Uh, I think from the standpoint of, of adding, they continue to be strong and postpaid, especially when uh, things are in theory uh, winding down with uh, greater than 105% uh, U.S. Uh, phone penetration. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a credit to them that they their tagline is that they've got 13 quarters of positive postpaid ad growth. Um, and prepaid, so it's a double win on their part because both are, are strengthening. Uh, I think it surprised a lot of people because their revenues were, were decent and their yep. margins are creeping up. And I, I think when, when the, they first started, the customer acquisition costs were, were really, really high because of the, um, the whole uh, buying, buying everybody out of the contracts. But as that's dying, dying down, I think that they're, they're posting good, good, um, good margin creeping up and uh, I guess uh, killing the, 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 the naysayers, uh, not killing, but you know. Yeah, quieting the naysayers. Thumbing their nose, probably. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they are. A better yeah. word. Yeah, no, it's been interesting, because you're right, it does show that they've been able to keep this momentum going for, for quite some time now. And, and the churn numbers are coming down, which is you know, not quite as low as perhaps Verizon and at t but the numbers have come down dramatically, and with their gross ads being what they are, yeah, I mean, they're able to post these strong numbers, and they're still seemingly to be taking customers from their rivals. Um, again, like you said, the prepaid numbers were great again. I mean, the Metro PCS integration has been going great. That, that was always some question about how they would do that. Uh, and initially, Metro, maybe to T-Mobile's benefit, Metro was so uh, somewhat limited in their distribution because they were focused on, I think, about a dozen big markets initially before T-Mobile bought them. T-Mobile comes in and was able to really expand that distribution because of the network. Uh, across the nation, really ride a pretty big wave of of a new entrant into the market in a lot of, lot of areas, which seemed to really kind of grow that prepaid. So, so yeah, they've been able to do postpaid strong growth and prepaid. And like you said, the financials too are really coming around as well. So, uh, you know, I hate to keep, you know, pumping them up, but they're doing, uh, still doing pretty well. It's amazing. Yeah, again, uh, thumbing the nose at naysayers uh, from the standpoint of what, what was revealed in the earnings call also was that they're going to increase uh, distribution. So distribution, distribution from the prepaid side as well as the postpaid side. So given the increased distribution, kind of the, the rule of thumb is that their gross ads are going to go up. Yeah. yeah, and again, with the trend going down, uh, and even they're, they're touting a lot the fact that you know, they're being highly recommended by their own customers. Uh, and so, yeah, it does show they've got some great momentum. Uh, I guess, you know, they've been a little bit perhaps soft in the past few months in terms of their uh, uncarrier initiatives. I know we're talking a bit offline about the last uncarrier one, which is what their, their T-Mobile uh, Tuesdays uh, thing. Um, I happen to have a T-Mobile phone, and so I've been kind of, you know, checking out what they've been doing with that. And it does seem like that's been, uh, it had a big surge initially. I know when they, when they announced it, there was a lot of hype around it by T-Mobile. 
Uh, it seems like perhaps, you know, the hype maybe has waned a little bit behind it. Um, who knows about that? But do you think that they're, that they're in need of another uh, Uncarrier initiative here soon? Or do you think that they're doing pretty well at kind of riding uh, their current momentum and, you know, don't really need to maybe do something that might be uh, uh, revenue uh, a risk or revenue risk for them going going forward? I think they're doing pretty well in, in the near term at least. Yeah, so and Carrier is is uh, has twofold, right? So the, it's a uh, it's a customer acquisition uh, play. Mm -hmm. It's also a customer retention play. So uh, I think the biggest one that I, I remember is is probably Ben John. So yeah. Ben John is both a customer acquisition. You do video all the time. We know it. We're not going to count it against your data bucket. So uh, that that plays on on both cards. So you know, going back to the Tuesday. The, the, I guess the takeaway is that things are free. And I think we, we talked off camera that yeah. people like, especially a, a, a certain demographic, like free. Yeah. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts. I think the, the biggest negative about it, as you said, is that it's waning in terms of like heavy duty, good offers. I remember the, the biggest story of one Tuesday was that Domino's pulled out because they just didn't, didn't anticipate the demand. Yeah. So I think from your standpoint, uh, or, or maybe some people who are kind of expecting more and more and more <laughs> like, you know, big high value partners to come in, you know, beyond the frosty or something. It's nice to have a frosty in the summer. No, but, no, yeah. you know, in the winter, I'm not, I'm not so thrilled with the frosty, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, to me, the problem with the T-Mobile Tuesday thing is, and again, it, you're right. Free stuff is always great, but it seems like it's one of those, um, offerings that T-Mobile really has to stay on top of. Like it's, it's, not something, it's not something you can just launch and let it ride out in the market. Like you can't just offer something and then just, you know, let it, let it be out there. This one here, they've got to have a team, I'm guessing. And they, you know, it's a big company. They, they can afford to have a team, but they've got to have people working on a constant basis trying to drum up new partnerships for this, uh, you know, trying to convince whether it's Wendy's or, you know, videos or whoever it is, somebody to kind of be part of it. And, and again, there's, it seemed like pretty strong demand because like you said, the Domino's thing, you know, Domino's wasn't expecting to have to give out all these free pizzas. Uh, and so, you know, it's a, definitely a trade-off there, but it seems like it's one of those um, um, offerings that they have to stay on top of to keep it fresh. Otherwise, it loses its, its, you know, kind of newness because it is one of those things that people every week are going to be looking back and say, hey, what do I get this week? What do I get this week? And if it's the same thing every week, which may, maybe it's not bad, but to kind of keep it, you know, new, they have to kind of always be changing it up in my mind at least. I mean, they've been doing a lot of stuff now where you can enter to win different contests, which, you know, that might, you know, have a way to do it as well. But it seems like it's one of those uncarrier things that has required them to be on top of it, I think, for an extended period of time. I'm not sure if they're, you know, if they might get tired of it, they might get tired of focusing on that and maybe switch something else and this one might go away, who knows. But that's, it just seems like more work to me for them. But, but mm -hmm. like I said, it's, it's, I think they, they're playing as a differentiation and in similar thought pattern about having higher expectations is, you know, go back to your original question is, do they, de do they need another uncarrier? What number are we up to? Uh, it should be, yeah, tw uh, 12. Yeah. I think it'd be 12 next, right? Yeah, 12. Yeah, so, so how many people remember three or, or whatever? You know, it just, True. there are so many. It's just almost like the offers where, you know, you have to think which one really wows you personally. So. Yeah they've had that whole international roaming for free thing. Uh, ben John's huge, you know, huge for them. Um, so it, it is like exactly like that, that, that there are so many offers, then you have this expectation and can you top that? You know? Yeah. I guess I get a lot of the media, you know, maybe you know, obviously I'm part of that as well. Trying to, I always expect something more to come out of it, but you're right. Maybe again, but their numbers have shown that whatever they've been doing, they've been doing the right thing. I mean, you can't, it's hard to argue with what they've been doing because, the results show uh, that it's getting customer attention. Uh, obviously, the financials are working out for them as well. Uh, so I guess that all plays out in the end. Hey, just, well, one, one thing I, I think they've been doing really well is uh, if for those people who, who follow them, um, they've been uh, saying for many years that they, they've been front loading. So what does front loading mean? It's basically trying to acquire the bulk of their customers based upon their guidance in the first half of the year. Yeah. And then invariably, they increase the guidance. Yeah. Right. So, so how do they, they, they acquire these customers? It's just promos, 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 right? They're really good at, at throwing these promos out, uh, publicizing it, uh, they're buying airtime on TV and, 
and boom, uh, they make their numbers and they increase their guidance. I mean, that, that's been their, their DNA, or at least their modus operandi for the last couple of years. And I asked the IR people, and it's basically, you know, you get them in earlier, you realize more revenue from those, yeah. those, those people during the year. So, you know, your, your cash is up and your, your revenues are up. So that makes all sense, all the logic in the world. Yeah, true, true. I, I guess maybe looking back back at some of the results as well, I mean, obviously a Sprint put in another um, mixed quarter. I don't know if, I mean, again, they, they showed some good, some good numbers. Uh, the financials were always a bit of a, a tricky part with Sprint. Uh, obviously, they're, you know, still not doing a lot in terms of CapEx for the whole year. Uh, but I guess in relation to what T-Mobile has been able to do, I mean, do, did you see Sprint at all as being maybe a little more positive coming out of the quarter? I mean, obviously, their, their stock has had a nice little surge over the past uh, month or so, uh, past couple of weeks, really. Uh, what's your view on, I guess, how Sprint has done relative to, to its rivals there? I think from uh, operations, they're, they're probably executing well in trying to acquire customers from AT&T and Verizon, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where the low-hang post-pay fruit is. So I guess they're doing well from a gross ad standpoint, but it comes down to a, a lot of people who are in the media or the, the financial analyst pool, industry analyst pool, is kind of wondering about if they can still subsist in their CapEx infrastructure program with less than five billion a year, especially when they're behind. Um, so let me do a side note that I saw a, uh, a video where Jamie Fox, Fox. Yeah, the new one from Verizon, yeah. a Verizon spokesperson. And what they bring back, they brought back the map, yep. right? Showing how, how, how ubiquitous the Verizon uh, coverage is. And I don't remember seeing that brought back in, in advertising. Well, you know, in, it was back in either singular or 18 when, when ATT mobility, remember they were fighting over the map yep. and it's interesting because Sprint's tagline is they went within 1% of Verizon and T-Mobile is like, we've got 311 million uh, LTE pops. So we're as good as Verizon. So we're, we've gotten to this, this point of perceived network priority or at least uh, what they're showing. And so Verizon, it's interestingly is fighting back, which they'd never done before. Yeah whether it's YouTube or, or, you know, directly taking on the people who are attacking them. This is really, you know, I think it's a change. Yeah. Other than, hey, we're above all this. Yeah, no, you're right. It's been and I will say, I'll get back to that in a second, but you're right, on the, on the map thing, it's interesting because, you know, obviously, yeah, everybody's trying to say that they're as good as Verizon in terms of pop coverage. Uh, but as you look at that new advertisement with Jamie Foxx in there, uh, you know, you see the Verizon coverage. And it's, it covers a lot of the map, but again, it covers a lot in the Western U.S. where not a lot of pops, but when you look at how it covers the map, it looks so much more impressive, you know, right. you know in, the, in the middle of Wyoming or Texas or Utah, all these areas where, again, no one's really at. People go there, but not a lot of pop coverage there, uh, for instance. So it is, it does seem like Verizon is going after, going back towards that map coverage to show, you know, they might have this, you know, similar number of pops, but when it comes to actual coverage map, we still have that. That's still our, our you know, bread and butter. So, and again, thanks back to the old, you know, Alltel acquisition and the Western Wireless acquisition. Right. Stuff. I mean, that just allowed them to have that West coverage that really, again, allowed them to really take advantage of that map coverage uh, in terms of what their rivals have been able to do. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see that that, that came out from them. But yeah, don't, also, don't forget also LTE. I think a lot of people don't get there in terms of national coverage without any roaming partners. So. Uh, Verizon is very, very upfront with the LTE rural roaming partner program. Yeah. Um, we have yet to hear uh, what everybody else is doing in terms of roaming partners. Uh, we know that CCA, the Competitive Carrier Association, is has a bunch of uh, smaller carriers that are potential roaming partners for T-Mobile and Sprint, yeah. um, and maybe AT&T as well. AT&T is kind of the, the you know, you haven't heard anything about roaming partners from the, those guys, but you know, it, 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 you, in order to get the coverage in the map, you had acquisition, as you said, with Altel and, and uh, roaming partners. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think Sprint is working a bit with CCA. I think they're supposed to have some roaming coming up here soon. But again, like, I don't think it's quite been activated yet. But yeah, there's some potential there for them to help. But you're right. The, the Verizon coming out aggressively against uh, the rivals was, uh, at least from my point of view, I mean, from my perspective, I love seeing that aggressiveness because I think Verizon needed to get perhaps more aggressive. I think their numbers have shown that, you know, they're losing um, overall. I mean, th- they've got a lot of connected devices that are helping out, but their growth is nowhere near what T-Mobile and Sprint have been doing. Um, yeah, on that note, it's interesting to, uh, to, to see a announced replacement for their C, the, the president of their wireless business. Yes. So, um, it's Ronan uh, Dunn from yeah. uh, the ex-CEO of O2. So 
bring a European on board, as well as the, the trend to bring more Europeans or international people within the U.S. wireless market. So it's interesting because I think Dunn has, as in the U U.K., uh, been very active on Twitter. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm just waiting for something to come between him and John. Yeah, no, and I think that's, yeah, that, that came up, I think it was last week when they announced that. Uh, my first thought was, is perhaps, you know, the higher ups at Verizon and the higher ups at Verizon are, you know, Lowell is a former wireless guy. Uh, you know, maybe he got tired of seeing the wireless division maybe not be as aggressive as it could have been in the face of its rivals being aggressive. And so, again, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened behind the scenes there, but uh, it just seems like the timing of that, you know, with bringing somebody else new in to kind of run uh, the wireless side of things. I mean, the people who've been at the wireless side, I mean, Dan Mead was been there for several years and he's definitely, you know, a great guy, nice, nice guy but probably not the most um, uh, loquacious, I'm not sure if that's the right word for it, but he's not uh, someone who's going to be on Twitter all day and, and be an aggressive person uh, touting Verizon Wireless. And yeah, so I think uh, it, you and I know, uh, and I, we'll shout out to Jeff Nelson, who's a VP of comms. He's probably the most attack dogish uh, yes. person from Verizon really, yeah. that, are, that is really high up in social media. And I think he goes directly against uh goes against uh, uh marcelo and john so uh so credit to uh to jeff and as i talked to him he says you know we don't we don't hit back we, we're we've been playing above it all so he's been the tack dog and maybe it'll be interesting to see if uh ronan dunn will, will do anything yeah no I, I am too i'm looking forward to that because i think it'd be great if he did i think it'd be great for verizon they would, i think you need to get back you know again they've got their their core business which have been doing great uh, they do a lot in terms of, you know, connected devices and things like that. And they're really good at doing that. But I think you need to get back to that wireless side of things and become a bigger player. I mean, again, having Jamie Foxx, well-known actor, as their spokesperson is a great way to go. Uh, and if they get their CEO or their, the leader of the, of the wireless division uh, a little more vocal on Twitter or whatever it's going to be, uh, going against Marcelo and, uh, and, and, the, and John, uh, it could be interesting. Yeah, it'd be a, and then, that, of course, that puts the ball into aging T's court, what they might do. Uh, they have been, you know, moving executives around here and there for a while now. Uh, and so, yeah, see if they might take the next step and become a little more aggressive too, because if the other three are doing it and AT&T's not, it could look a little strange. Yeah, I, I, also, I, also, I don't think uh, Randall's on Twitter and neither is Glenn or Ralph. So yeah. um, you got to have a proxy uh, to do that. And I don't know who that proxy is. I haven't seen them doing attack dogish type of uh, things on social media. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if that plays out. But yeah, it was interesting to see the Verizon moves, their executive uh, moves and, and things too. So we'll see. Yeah, again, hopefully that becomes uh, a springboard for them to become more aggressive. And uh, I think Ronan uh, takes over there in, in the next couple of weeks. So maybe we'll see something happen uh, once he comes on board officially and we kind of see how that plays out. But uh, Well, I'll also be interested to see if he brings any, any of his uh, people over. True. Yeah, you're know, right. As, as, uh, as things happen in corporate, as you uh, kind of look, to bring your people, your trusted people over. Yeah. And again, yeah, I mean, with Sprint, you saw, you've seen a lot of turnover there at their executives and a lot of them who have come over seem to have been friends with others and they bring them as well. And so that kind of has been part of their whole process. I know I've talked to a lot of the former Sprint executives over the past couple of weeks, uh, off the, a lot of off the record comments. And, uh, you know, it, it, there were some definitely big changes there at Sprint and, uh, you know, some people moved on and other people were, were let to move on and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, you're right. As, you, as people turn over, you do, bring new blood in and uh, yeah, maybe for Verizon, we'll see if that's kind of the next move for them. Cause that'll be uh, interesting. Cause they are, you know, again, a very a somewhat conservative company. So to see them make these kind of changes, doesn't happen very often, but when it does, usually it means something usually. So um, we'll yeah, see. So what I wanted you to, uh, I, I did uh, in preparation for this call, I did some uh, look at what's kind of the trend uh, of postpaid um, from the standpoint of what percentage of their branded base. So I'll just make, not the base, but the branded base, which means retail, postpaid, and prepaid mm -hmm. are, is postpaid. So um, from Verizon, let's see, uh, let's go for AT&T. AT&T from Q1, 15 to now, they dropped 2% from 88% of the, the, the retail base to 86. And then in, in, uh, in prepaid, it's 12% up. So down 2% there and up 2%. So 14% now is their prepaid side. Yeah. Uh, on Verizon, always, always postpaid because why do they hit them? Because that's where low hanging fruit is. So they have moved from 90, about 94 and a half percent in one Q15 to 95.3. Yeah. And then there, and we know that the story that they always lose, they've been losing their prepaid. So it went from 5.5 to 4.7. 
And whether that is by design or not, we, we don't know. But I mean, it just shows that Verizon remains a strong prepaid company. That's where the money's at. Yeah. Let's keep it that way. <clears throat> so, you know, from the modus operandi, it, they have to protect that base. So, um, so let's move on to what, what's interesting is T-Mobile. T-Mobile went from 63% to 64%. Yeah. So not a whole lot of change, but they're like slow trudging along to quietly increase their postpaid base, which is, as we know, that's where the money is. Yeah. Also, same same goes for, for Sprint. Sprint went from 65% um, in Q1, a little bit over to uh, close to 69% postpaid now. Mm-hmm. And as we know, and I think it's by design, is that they went from 30, a little under 35% to now 31% of their base is prepaid. So yeah. um, again, I think by design, they just want to, and they said it before, we're going to increase uh, our focus on postpaid. Yeah. Well, thinking about Sprint too, I, I know in the next couple of weeks here, they're supposed to announce a revamp of their prepaid, the Virgin Mobile. Uh, and as part of all their executive shakeups, they've kind of uh, changed their their prepaid uh, executives as well there. So, uh, so you're right. I mean, it does seem like over the past six months to a year, they definitely have less, less focus on the prepaid side. But it sounds like they're supposed to at least be making some sort of a, a change in terms of Virgin Mobile, at least altering their, their lineup there. I mean, they, they brought the company's uh, uh, headquarters back to the Kansas City area, uh, which I'm not sure how well that's going to go over with the executives who are there, but that's kind of what happened. But uh, we'll see. Oh, yeah, it does sound like they're, they're going to maybe in, in, include or increase maybe some focus on the prepaid side. But I guess we'll see once that plays out and how the new, new leaders there kind of uh, push, the, push the prepaid side of things. And, yeah, I think uh, for, at least from Sprint, just quickly on, on that, everybody's going towards the, the high value users, right? So um, Virgin is a prepaid brand, but they're, they're focused on the high value users. Boost is a looking at high value users and having them in recurring, uh, recurring revenue. It's, it's basically, you want stuff that is uh, over three to five bucks a month. It's yeah. gone other days where you, you covet in volume those pay as you go guys, right? So it's the same as, you know, that's why Metro PCS exists. That's why cricket exists. And so going from, from that standpoint, you go back to that theory where uh, at t is pushing where a $35 prepaid person uh, is on cricket or actually 41 is better than a 10, $12 or, you know, $30 postpaid uh, person who's a phone only, you know, the legacy phone people. Yeah. So um, it remains to be seen if it plays out. I think it's playing out at least from from a, the revenues and uh, the margin side. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, 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 on the prepaid side of things, a lot of those guys, it's it's now become a thirty five to forty low forty price ARPU now. Where on the postpaid side, you know, the postpaid ARPUs taking out the device payments has really become a forty five to fifty five dollar play. So it's really the, the, two, the two extremes there have really moved closer together. It used to be, you know, postpaid was always, you know, a $60 ARPU and prepaid was a $30 ARPU and they were pretty far apart. Now the ARPUs on both of those have come together quite a bit. Uh, and it's mostly just a device payment that really keeps the, uh, the postpaid side, you know, anywhere above what the, what the prepaid side is. But you're right, it does seem like carriers are more comfortable now with moving some of those low paying postpaid people to prepaid because, you know, they pay the full price for the devices, and you just get the recurring revenue coming in every month. And that's, you know, a nice little chunk of change coming in as well. Yeah. There, there's a, I think a, in three, some numbers in third quarter and fourth quarter is going to be interesting simply because uh, people asked either uh, Verizon or at t about what they're seeing in terms of upgrade. So one of the things that, that everybody looks at is upgrade. So upgrade yeah. equals uh, in, in a uh, EIP environment or a no contract environment, an opportunity for churn or uh, a, a boost in or decrease in ARPU. Or, so the, it's been a two year cycle. Yep. Right? So uh, Verizon at t uh, introduced their versions back in July of 13. Uh, no, 13, is it 13? Four Couple years. Uh, yeah, yeah, 14. 14, yeah. So uh, that, that is when, when uh, this comes up. So it would be interesting because it's timed almost with in third quarter with a new iPhone. And yep. so, uh, everybody has said before that this is a, a huge switching opportunity. And I think the article has been saying that since uh, 18, uh, T-Mobile and Sprint are low cost uh, service plan providers, they have a huge opportunity to take from Verizon at t more so than they have in the past. Yeah, I'm interested to see, yeah, I mean, obviously the iPhone has always, it has become a, a Q3, Q4 
uh, phenomenon now, and that's kind of what's impacting everybody. I know, like the last iPhone launch or the iPhone six launch, you know, uh, Verizon or Sprint and AT&T or Sprint and T-Mobile came out pretty aggressively with the uh, low monthly, you know, dollar or five dollar a month kind of things. They really went aggressive at it. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how aggressive everybody gets with the next iPhone, which is not expected to be a huge upgrade. It's it's, it's the iPhone six again, basically, maybe some upgrades to it, but it's not supposed to be a whole new device for the most part. Yeah, I think, well, so, so my opinion there is that you, you have people who, you know, one of the, the things about uh, EIP is that people are, are holding onto the handsets longer. So that means that there are 5S people there, there are five people there, there are certainly six people there because they're two-year cycle, yeah. right? Uh, so those people are going to be interesting to see if they upgrade at all or they just keep going. Keep waiting for the uh, next one, yeah. Yeah, and just save save that extra monthly payment or or not. So, third quarter and fourth quarter are going to be really really interesting to see what app app pu average billing per user yeah, or ABP ARPA ABP. will be yeah. in Q four in one Q seventeen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess are you expecting anything pretty aggressive this year, or do you think uh, because of yeah. the timing well, of stuff? So, so it's interesting. So when 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 the six came out, I remember AT and T giving two hundred bucks for. So this was the old days. So, you know, personally, my, uh, you can get a new iPhone basically for, for what you pay for back in the contract days. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of rebates uh, everybody's going to give, whether the retailers like Best Buy, who is usually aggressive, Target, uh, or, or anybody else, will be a lot higher than the carriers. So, you know, Verizon offered something very, very uh pretty good in, in for the success. If you remember, yeah. AT&T didn't follow suit. We thought that they were going to follow suit, but um, if you remember, so AT, uh, Verizon as a carrier was, was better in terms of incentives than, than the retail distribution guys. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be yeah, interesting what happens. And again, that always tied up with the, you know, back to school thing. I know a lot of carriers have been very aggressive in terms of their family plans, getting those things going. T-Mobile launched uh, you know, a recent thing about, you know, giving, uh, a free month of service or a free month of data service for the most part for people who, you know, want to try how much, see how much data they use. So uh, the, the past month or so has been pretty aggressive in terms of some new plans coming out and again, the back to school stuff too. So, uh, and then with the iPhone coming out theoretically next month sometime. Um, yeah. that well, one of the things that, that I think they, they've been, all carriers have been doing with gross ads is using a BOGO, right? Yeah. The so buy one, get one. That, that sounds great. But the, 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 the asterisk is that you have to add another line yes, yes right so that's that's a gross ad so that's kind of a trick that carriers have been using to uh to boost up the gross ads they're always tricking customers that's what i've always said they're tricking them well the the best part are, 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 are taking it so yes yes but yeah it's been a lot of bogo it's been a lot i mean even you know uh t-mobile offering free devices if you sign up for a higher tier data plan and things like that too and for everybody on, on the account so yeah they're definitely targeting multi-line it's not just going after the single customer anymore it seems like the single customer they're willing to let that single customer go prepaid for all they care uh, and just go for almost the the multi-line postpaid plans is kind of what they're right so you know it, it's 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 like the the same playbook as as before you increase the number of lines on, on a family plan the stickier you are the the more commitment you have because you know in actuality a, a payment plan is a contract yeah whether it's 24 months it's 30 months or whatever have you it's still a contract yeah. And again, with everybody still pretty much offering to pay off, you know, your pay, your device payment or whatever it is, uh, the more lines you have, though, it does seem like that just makes it that much harder to change. I mean, obviously, it's still, you know, you, you can get the money back if you wanted to, but it's still having to change everybody's phone. You have to get everybody's phone from the family and switch them to new phones. And it's just a pain to do that. So, right. yeah, the more lines it seems you can get on, a, on an account, it just, it takes away that one, it adds one more barrier uh, to a customer ever having to change. And so that's obviously what they're, what they're trying to do. I think it's just make it more difficult for change. Yeah, uh, the point is that it's a similar playbook. Yeah, nothing's changed, it's all the same. That is correct, sir. That's all happened, so. Well, any, I guess anything else that you saw in Q2 or that you're seeing recently that's kind of caught your eye or have we covered, uh, we've covered a lot. Have we covered most of it or anything else that's, that's popped out for you that you've seen in the past uh, couple of weeks? No, it'll be interesting on the iPhone. I think the, uh, what, what, what everybody's going to be focused on how, how the iPhone does from a device standpoint, we, we yeah. saw that Samsung just doing promos left and right, trying to get acquire those people so that they don't go to the iPhone. I mean, certainly they'll, they'll get the, the Samsung, uh, the Android base, but you know, to the detriment of all the other carriers because they have a deeper pockets. And it comes down to, 
Apple to see how many Android people swap over to uh, iPhone or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. That, that, that's kind of what we're looking for next. I think in terms of uh, excitement in the in the wireless space will be that part now. So yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, but again, that's so that's again most of the wireless topic there. That's all I want to talk about there. But uh, uh, I think the more important conversation for us, I think, is um, on our beverage of choice for today. And so as I as I teased uh, as we teased earlier in the show, um, we are going to talk a little bit about Scotch now and. Uh, uh, as, as our guest, I will let you uh, perhaps uh, present first. What is your, uh, your scotch of the, of the day for us today? Okay, I will try to, because when I, when I rewatch some of this stuff, I, it, it pains me. So, <laughs> so, so you people are watching, like, get to the point already. So here's the point. Uh, I got Macallan 10. It's a, a very uh, well-known, uh, high-marketed brand. It's a high-premium brand. Uh, I got this from my sons. Thanks, sons. Uh, it's 10. 10-year-old uh, Macallan, it's an entry. It's a uh, fine oak. It is uh, probably bourbon uh, yep. uh, oak. Um, yes, yep. What I like about it is that it's not overwhelming and it is a pretty good, mellow, but intense flavor. Interesting. And it's, it's widely available. Um, the 10-year you know, could be a little, it's maybe a little harder to find sometimes, but for the most part, Macallan, you can find it at most liquor stores. Uh, most uh, big box wholesalers will have those kind of things as well too. So uh, a good color. And again, the, the flavors, you're a big fan of it. A, a good, a good, uh, good taste for you. Yes, that is correct, sir. So uh, also want to mention, because you're going to mention this, this is a normal 40%, 40% by volume. Yes. It's a, from a geography standpoint, it is in Speyside and it's in the Highlands and it is a, uh, it's owned by a large, um, I guess, liquor company, but it's a Scottish. So it's within the UK. Yes. Yeah. Again, a, a very good, very good scotch. Good. I think most people, similar to like a nice uh, Glenlivet 12 or a Glenfiddich 12, uh, it's a great one that most people should have probably in their liquor cabinet. It's a great one to have when friends come over, uh, it can be pretty casual with it. It seems like it's a good, uh, to me, it's a good scotch. I would agree. That's a, that's a great one to have. Uh, you don't feel guilty drinking it uh, because it's really expensive or something like that. Uh, so it's, uh, again, it's a nice scotch. Maybe a little too much caramel for my taste, but that's okay. Uh, that's that uh, cheap. Let's... Well, it's not, it's not an expensive one. <laughs> Sorry. but it's, it's still reasonably priced it's not going to cut set you back more than a hundred dollars it's, it's it's more right. in that, the 40 to 60 dollar range like if i've seen right that range, so, right uh, it's a good one to have that way so so a, a good a good price if you can get it it's probably like 45 bucks yeah yeah so yeah see for 45 bucks grab a bottle or two uh it's not gonna go bad so keep it around for a little bit you'll make it a you'll make it a 12 year pretty soon if you, if you keep it long enough but uh, uh so so my uh, entry for today is a uh uh, a little bit older, I've got the uh, Glenlivet Nadura um, Natural Cask Strength 16 year. This one right here, you can see that at all. Uh, very uh, light color, again, not much, uh, I believe, very little caramel in this one from what I've seen. Um, it is a 16 year, uh, it's got quite a, a little bit of a kick to it. It's a 55%, uh, this one here is a 55.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, these do tend to vary. I've gotten a few bottles in the past where I've seen them go between 54 and 56% uh, alcohol content. So they make them in pretty small batches. So when you pick up a bottle, if you can find it, um, it's going to vary. It's not going to be a pretty, it's not going to be a standard 40% that you're going to see across the board. Uh, they will vary on the bottle itself. They'll give you the batch number on there, when it was bottled, um, quite a bit of detail. So uh, at least there's an appearance of it being a, a fairly small batch type of of uh, 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 scotch again i'm not sure how many of these actually make but um i know when this when i bought this one there were quite a few around uh more recently i've not been able to find it but i haven't searched too wide but um so if you, but if you do see them out there uh it's it's a little more expensive but it's a you a, a little more powerful of scotch so if you want to have something around the house that's you know maybe a step up from the traditional 12 year or 10 year uh it could be a good way to go uh, it is powerful, like I said. Um, it might be good to uh, drop a little water or maybe an ice cube in there. I'm not a big fan of doing that. But with this one here, uh, we had some friends over last night. They, uh, one of them had some ice with it. Uh, it turned a little cloudy with the ice, which I wasn't expecting. So you put some ice in there, and a few minutes later, uh, it gets a bit of a haze to it, which is, uh, which is different. But, uh, again, I think a very nice uh, scotch to have. Well, let me ask you, because I've never had it, is uh, what does Nadora mean? And... Um, we go back and forth on this, and yes. I think we, we, we talked about how blasphemous it is to add anything but a drop of water for uh, for scotch, single malt specifically. Yes, 
Yes. Yeah, I would agree. So this one here, so Nadura, from what I've read, it's a Gaelic term, which means uh, natural. So it's supposed to be a more of a natural scotch. So again, not much added to it, whether it's a coloring or anything like that. So uh, again, if you look at it, it's a fairly light color to it. So it does seem like it lives up to that name. Um, but uh, yeah, when it comes to adding stuff, again, I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of doing that myself. Yeah, I, I think we've talked like, about that before. Uh, but uh, this one here, I think if someone wanted to add some to it, I can see where it might be. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know, thumb my nose at them because I think, again, it could be a little powerful. The initial uh, drink, it's, it's got a bit of a kick to it. Um, so, you know, for some people who aren't quite ready for that, it could be, it, it makes sense. Again, I wouldn't recommend it myself, but I wouldn't put it past somebody to ask for uh, an ice cube or two or a drop of water. So from, from the taste standpoint, yeah. Dan, uh, what, what, what kind of taste is it? Is it, is it clear? Is it smooth? Is it... It's, it, I mean, is it, is it peaty? Is, is it, it's strong. It's got a bit of peatiness to it. It definitely is. I, to me, it's, it's still smooth. It's got some nice um, uh, fruit. I was trying to think about it like last night as I was drinking it, trying to, what I was getting out of it. And it definitely is some fruit, hint of fruit to it um, and some honey as well. It's got a probably more honey overpowering to it than anything else. Um, but it's still, it's, a, it's really dry. Um, so it's not going to linger too long. Um, you get the taste, you get the, the quick initial hit, which is, it is a little powerful, but it's not too bad. Uh, then you get the quick honey and fruit, and then it, it goes away pretty fast. So, um, so it's not that's a, water. The water definitely brings a more fruit to it. Yeah. So that, I guess that, that's where I'm coming from, is that if you grow to appreciate what, what the, the manufacturers are making in terms of these flavors, you, you put ice in it, you just miss them. Yeah. You put a, a lot more water, just a little more just to cut it, because it might be too strong, but you still, you still appreciating the flavors. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's, it's great for that. So again, I think it's, it's a, again, a nice bottle. Uh, it drinks well. Uh, again, it's not something you want to be throwing around every day as uh, just kind of a, uh, you know, whenever somebody comes over, but it's uh, good for special occasions. Uh, this bottle here, we had a little bit last night. I plan on putting it away now for a while. I probably won't have it for quite some time. Uh, I'm a little nervous. For a while there, I had a few bottles of it stacked up and uh, somehow gone through a lot of them. So. I'm going to cherish this bottle for a while because, again, like I said, I, I couldn't find it the last couple of times I've looked for it. So um, uh, I'll keep that one set aside and bring out something different next time. But, uh, but again, a great, uh, another great Glenlivet. I've done a lot of Glenlivets. I know you've been a little more uh, uh, diverse in your selections here, which I, I, I think is great. It's a little more uh, different models brought on, which has been good to, good to see. Uh, yeah, it, it depends on the personality, right? So you you yeah. you, you enter a uh, a new hobby, yeah. all of a sudden you want to see the what the breath is, as opposed to there are people who are just brand specific and uh, they know what they like. You know, both are equally good. It's just you know depends on personality. Different way to do it. Different way to do it. So so again, so I'm guessing from from you, you're McAllen, a thumbs up from you on that. A good a good purchase there. I recommend it. It's a great entry, McAllen. Uh, can't say enough about it. If, it, when it, if I'm going to be out, I'll buy another bottle. There you go. And again, for the Glen Levitt, for this Nadura, uh, again, I would agree. It's a, it's a great one to find. Again, it's a little difficult. But when I've seen online, some have claimed it's, dis, it's been discontinued. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Um, but if you can find it out there, I think I've seen it online. You can purchase it some places. Uh, so if you can find it and you want to try something uh, different, uh, definitely worth getting. But uh, uh, So yeah, definitely thumbs up here as well for those. Again, a few dollars more, but uh, it's definitely, uh, I, think, I think, worth uh, stepping up to it. So, uh, anyway, well, great. Well, hey, Bill, always great to talk uh, wireless carriers, but obviously, more importantly, to talk scotch with you. So, uh, I know a lot of people are getting jealous of us uh, drinking scotch in the middle of the day, but uh, anybody can do it, really. Hey, so, um, here, here's my drink, uh, I, just to be, uh, I'm drinking the scotch that I'm talking about. Yes, I should have done that, too. Yeah, I had some last night, but uh, you're right. Make sure we put our, our money where our mouth is or our scotch where our mouth is when talking about this. Uh, I probably should let it sit a little bit longer, but um, I'll drink it anyway. Yeah, definitely got a kick initially, but it smooths out nicely. It's, uh, it's good. Good color. I like too. the matching, uh, matching glass, by the way. Oh, did I, did I put that around that side? Yeah, so yeah. Again, if you buy some of the Glen Levitts, they will occasionally come with a free glass. You can get a free glass sometimes too. So anyway. Mike McCoy, did you hear about that? The who now? Mike. The oh, ATP. yes. yes. First yes. Week we talked about last time. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so I would uh, cheers and thank you for again for uh, having me on Carrier Wrap. Thanks so much again, Bill, for joining us. We always appreciate it. Like I said, it's great to talk carriers. Great to talk uh, Scott with you. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon on uh, both topics.
Well, thanks for watching this week's show, and make sure to check us out again next week when we are scheduled to speak with Market Force Information on its recent survey of the nation's favorite wireless carriers. Thanks for watching.